All right, now that we've got this rascal put together, we can tap these dowel pins through so they're about half and half, and then um, you know that they're fully in place. Now, if this press ever comes apart, if you're going to ship it or move it, make sure that uh, these print stations stay the same. If you've got a couple of these, um, make sure that the print stations for each press stay with that particular press. If you accidentally scramble them up, somebody's going to be unhappy. Because each one of these things is a little different. So next we can put the shirt boards on this guy. And typically, with any of the knobs on this press, what I like to advocate is twisting as far as you can with just your fingers, and then grab it with, a, with your hand and give it a quarter of a turn for everything on this press, including the shirt board brackets. This tubing um, here is as light as I can possibly make it so that the rotating weight on this thing is as little as possible. But while you're doing that, if Godzilla comes in here and tightens this thing up, eventually you can start bending the bottom of the tube. So you want to make sure that you take it easy on the knobs. Screen printer. On, on the excuse me on the knobs you uh -huh. tighten the left side first or the right side first and yes. then the bottom right and also put your hand fully across the shirt board because the side knob uh, exerts a little bit of torque it'll want to tip the board now we can spin this around and make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to do. You'll notice these detents aren't supposed to actually stop the press. It's just when you stop the press where you're printing, that detent will fall into the groove and just keep it from going nuts on you. But it'll also allow you to advance to the next print station very easily. Right, so is this press pretty much set up? Yeah, it is. We're about ready to uh, enter into putting a screen in here and setting off contact and that sort of thing. Okay, let's get going. All right. Okay, on each, uh, each job, the platen position is just a little bit different, so you want to check the art to make sure that uh, where you're putting your positive is actually going to fit the press. Um, quite often, I'll just use my hand on it and re replicate that for the rest of the uh, locations. For setting the job up, we're going to want to have a control, so we'll use the number one print station and we'll use the number one print head, because those are the two references that we use at the factory to set this press up. So we're going to want to go all the way down into here, and this feels just a little bit tight. There we go. And this part right here we're going to, that's, this is the registration gate? Yes. Uh, one of the things that I did in these new presses, um, I went to a two inch center shaft, which is quite Herculean. It's got some really large tapered roller bearings. Uh, we don't use grease on these. We use uh, STP because it thoroughly penetrates the metal and the speed that this rotates at is so slow that grease will actually start to harden up and dry after a couple of years and not actually lubricate. So that's what we use on the center of this thing. My previous presses had uh, the registration back about 40% closer to the center of the press. So I've moved these, the registration points out 40% closer to the screen. That's what this five inch uh, block is. And I've also changed the grip from three and a half inches back here to five inches all the way out on the front. So this wide base registration system has really made a big difference in terms of being able to grab the print head correctly and support it. So this has been a nice upgrade. When this press is set up, uh, there are stop bolts 
on the gate itself and also on the back as a safety bolt for the printhead itself. So this number one and one is the control that we use for leveling all the rest of the print stations. We set the first one up, get it right, and then we pull, put everything else in agreement with this first um, print station. So let me show you this sideways here a little bit. To set off contact, there are two vertical slots uh, that you can see through the front of the clamp. And there's also a top tilt bolt. There's the hole itself is about a half an inch. The bolt going through it is three eighths. So it's got the ability to tilt if the back end of the screen frame is warped a little bit, which is on wood especially is quite often the case. So to set up the off contact correctly, I like to use a shim that um, basically fools the press into thinking that it's laying flat with itself. So that's what size should that be? How thick? Yeah, about an eighth of an inch uh, seems to be a good place to start. And you want to tape that in place so it doesn't move around because you're going to be putting your positives on top of this. But for example here, we'll just go ahead and do it without any kind of um, speciality. And what we want to do is to have this screen lay dead flat on this uh, platen. So what we're going to be doing, thank you, is loosening these guys up. And you're using a 9 16 wrench for that? Yep, same cool guy, ratchet wrench. So basically right now we're leveling the press out. Yep. So you're going to want to give it a little karate chop right here. Make sure that this is all the way down in the gate. You want to make sure that this is loose so that this screen can lay all the way down in the gate and be dead flat with everything that you've got. So then what you're going to do is snug this up just a little bit on the outer side. Tighten this end up, tighten your tilt bolt if this thing is laying where it's supposed to be. Tighten that up and tighten up your last off contact slot. Now there's another bolt down here in the bottom. That's preset at the factory. It's supposed to be just snug. It's not supposed to be tight because you want to be able to rotate this just a little bit if you have to. If for some reason you have problems um, getting this tilt to happen, chances are somebody has accidentally tightened this bottom bolt up. So you can loosen that up just enough to allow this to uh, create the tilt that you need. So once you've um, registered all your screens uh, and the artwork is where you want it, you can test print it if you're happy with it. You can pull the uh, platen out, and this will give you the off contact that you set over here. Now, one last thing that I like to do as well is to put an off contact shim of the same basic thickness on the outer end of the screen to support the screen during the print stroke because you're putting a lot of pressure on this thing and the farther out you go the more of a lever you've got. So if you've got this to where it's supported on the outer end, the 40 pounds of pressure you put during the print stroke is going to be supported out here. So your off contact will be uniform throughout the whole print stroke. And that's the objective. Now this is a question we get from customers. That kind of takes the place somewhat of side clamps. Right. Well basically what, what goes on with side clamps, I mean I've uh, as a race car guy, I like to get in and out of the pits as quick as possible. And for me, side clamps are for large screen format. Uh, I designed this press for a 23 inch uh, width screen maximum capacity, which you don't really need side clamps for. On my old presses that were 26 inches, yeah, side clamps were something that you would want to use. But for something this narrow, you don't really need to use them. And I really prefer to make one set of adjustments instead of two 
um, just for speed. We have uh, a number of these presses that are used as test presses for automatics, which are 23, 31 inch frames, and those work quite well. They have to have a longer print station because for an automatic, the image is farther out on the screen, but we don't have any problem with the screens moving around or anything else. So as long as you're at 23 inches, back clamp is fine and dandy.